admit I'm not a morning person, so I'm going to try not to trip over my own words and, and uh, speak clearly and traffic, as I'm sure it was for everyone else up there. Uh, but this morning, I want to talk about the pre-A and DA logistics and best practices. And some of my talk is going to have some, a little bit of repetitiveness with lays in order to just reinforce some points. And then there's going to be some other parts that are going to dovetail nicely with what she's been talking about. And then after I speak, Sunila from OPQ will be, again, continuing on with the same theme. So the things that I'm going to cover are include submitting a meeting request through the portal, pre-A&D process itself within ODD and OPQ, the pre-A&D meeting request and package, some program metrics and trends that we've seen now that we're 10, 11 months into the program, and give some tips and advice on what we've seen and how, how people can make a better package and um, improve their chances of getting a meeting with OGD and OBQ. So I think everyone's kind of seen this side, but the pre ANDA program goal, which was established by Gaduva 2, is meant to clarify the regulatory expectations for prospective applicants early in product development. We want to assist applicants. So, so we really want to help applicants develop complete submissions so that when they come in the door, their application is in good shape. We want to promote a more efficient and effective ANDA assessment. So by um, result of that, it will be promoting a more efficient and effective ANDA assessment process. And it will reduce the ultimate goal, as everyone is mentioning, to reduce the number of review cycles required to obtain an ANDA approval, particularly for complex products. So this table you may have seen before and you may see again. It's just a nice depiction of what complex products are in a table format. And it, um, it's what Lay went over and what uh, Cook went over. And it just gives you a few examples of the uh, types of um, products that fall into the complex product category. So as Lay also mentioned, the components of the pre and program under GDUFA 2 encompass research, product-specific guidances, meetings for complex products and controls. And all these things together uh, create this um, pre a and program um, that is part of GDUFA 2 that helps get towards this better um, application that can come in the door. So there are three meeting types uh, that are part of the new GDUFA 2 paradigm. And these meeting types are meant to accelerate the access of generics to complex products through early engagement, again, with FDA. And I think the stress that you keep hearing is the early engagement with FDA before your application comes in the door. The first type of the meeting uh, is the pre and product development meeting. It's often abbreviated as the PDEV. You, see, you might see that on your um, project title if you have submitted a meeting with us. It'll be part of your uh, title of your um, project so that you'll, you'll see PDEV. And that is meant to be an early engagement in your individual product development program. The next, set, the next type of meeting is a pre-submission meeting, which is uh, abbreviated as a P-sub meeting. And this is when you're ready or close to ready to submit your application. And the third type of meeting under the meeting types is the mid-review cycle meetings, which I always want to say mid-cycle review, so I may get that wrong in the future. <laughs> and this is for after your ANDA has been submitted. So a little bit about the goal dates that we have under GDUFA 2. We have been go doing pre-ANDA meetings for longer than GDUFA 2. We did them in GDUFA 1, and we actually did some before GDUFA 1, for those of you that may not know that. Uh, but for, as part of GDUFA 2, we have goal dates, which um, helps both, I think, helps both us and you guys uh, get to the um, desired outcome faster. So the first is that within 30 days of year, in year one and two and 14 days for the three years beyond, we'll respond to the request of your, your meeting request to grant or deny the meeting. So what that means is within 30 days after you submit your meeting request, the day you submit your meeting request is day one, Within 30 days, we'll reply back to you whether we've granted or denied your meeting. 
And then if your meeting has been granted, FDA will offer a meeting date within 120 calendar days of the granting of the request. And what this means is that the day that we send you the grant letter, from that day, 120 days, you'll be off within 120 days of that that um, day, you'll be offered your meeting. There, you will get a chance to speak with the project manager and come to a mutually agreed upon meeting time. So there's a little flexibility in that. I don't want people to think that you're given a meeting time and that's that. Uh, we do try to work with companies as much as possible. Five days before the meeting, you'll receive a uh, preliminary written comment from the FDA, which is essentially our written response to your questions that you've asked in your meeting packet. And then after you've had the, we've had the meeting, the meeting minutes will be sent within 30 days. So for product development meetings, these meetings are meant to be are meant to be a scientific exchange to discuss specific issues or questions. And so some examples of these are novel proposed study design, or an alternative bioequivalence approach, or additional study expectations that you may have. FDA is going to provide targeted advice regarding the ongoing NDA program development program. So that means our advice is going to be targeted to your specific development program. So you need to provide data and um, information that's that is specific to your program. For pre-submission meetings, these are meetings to discuss and explain the format and content of your ANDA that's getting ready to be submitted. Applicants can obtain advice that will enable efficient review and improve the chance of a first cycle approval. And the pre-submission meetings will not include substantive review of summary data or full study reports. And it's also, uh, and the a and is expected to be submitted within 6 to 12 months. You need to think a little bit about the timing because the meeting process is essentially six, 12, 6 months, 30 days for the grant deny, 120 days for the meeting, 30 days for the meeting minutes. So you need to think about the timing of when you want to submit your meeting request with versus when you're going to submit your um, and application if you anticipate there being anything that you might need to change or something based coming out of the meeting. Third meeting type, the mid-review cycle meeting. These are provided the applicant with an update on the status of the review on their application. They're generally around the midpoint of the application review plus 30 days. And they're dependent on you having a PDEV or a PSUB meeting. So that means you have to have had a PDEV or a PSUB meeting in order to get a mid-review cycle meeting. So a little bit about the pre day meeting decision. I apologize this slide is so stuffed, um, but I think it's important information. Um, so when will FDA grant the a product development meeting? And so if the meeting is about a complex product for which we have not issued a product-specific guidance, and um, or proposes an alternative equivalence evaluation for complex product for which we have issued a product specific guidance. Those are cases where we will submit a meeting request. So what that means is if there's no PSG there, and it's a complex product, we're likely to grant the meeting. If there is a PhD, it's a PhD, <laughs> a PSG, and you want to do an alternative equivalence, bioequivalence evaluation, some alternative approach to what's in the guidance, then you can submit a meeting request. There's a few other caveats that have to come along with that, which includes that you have to submit a complete meeting package. The meeting packages are due at the time that you submit your meeting request, which is different from the OND process, in case those of you are familiar with that. Um, and that if you, you want to submit a meeting when a controlled correspondence response wouldn't adequately address what your um, question is, so if you have a simple or uh, single question, a control correspondence may be a better option for you than a meeting request. And the product development meeting would significantly improve ANDA assessment efficiency. 
So for we also make grant meetings um, other than those I identified in the slide before for uh, um, dependent on available resources. So this is where um, we we have some leeway in whether we're going to grant the meeting or not. And this is if the prospective applicant again still needs to submit a complete meeting package, including data, package and specific proposal. And you feel that this is going to be a helpful engagement with the FDA in order to get your application um, and your development program moving along. Again, same thing, control correspondence wouldn't adequately address your question and that the, the meeting would, would improve ANDA assessment efficiency. The mid-review cycle meetings, they, they occur post-submission, as mentioned before. They're held only one time. Whereas product development and pre-submission uh, pre -submission meetings, can, you can have more than one of those, depending on um, the, stat, the state of your development program and the advice that you receive out of those meetings. They are held via teleconference uh, during the first review cycle with the a and applicant. And you must have participated in a prior product development or pre-submission meeting. They generally take place 30 days after the midpoint of the review cycle, which is after the last key discipline is issued its IRs and DRL letters. So the next thing I want to talk about is a little bit of kind of administrative, uh, which is the CEDAR Direct Next Gen Collaboration Portal, which is quite a mouthful, and how you actually submit a meeting request to the FDA for a pre-ANDA meeting. This is new beginning um, with Gadufa 2. And instead of this long name that I always have to read carefully to get it out right, we, everyone calls it the portal for short. And that's what I'm going to call it from now on, the portal. Here's the website up here for those of you that haven't used it before. So what is the portal for? Uh, this is the website that where the industry can submit information to the FDA. And besides pre and meeting, the portal does have other uses, and it's growing. These include drug shortages. So if you want to notify the FDA about a drug shortage or supply issue, this is where you can go to do that. Uh, program fees and licensure is also part of it. And something that is, I think is interesting to know is that control correspondence, which many of you have used in the past, is coming to the portal very soon. So, in, so what should you use the portal for in the context of this talk? And for this, it would be for pre-ANDA meeting requests for complex generic products. They previously were submitted through the generic drugs email account. We would prefer that you not submit them that way anymore and that you come through the portal. It helps with our uh, tracking and uh, creation of the projects and logistics. And it helps you too because the because of the portal has some advantages, and it's used for pre A and A product development meetings and pre submission meetings. It's not used for mid review cycle meetings. For those, if you're eligible, the FDA is going to contact you directly. So what do I need to do first in order to get on the portal and to get a, a meeting submitted? And the first thing you need to do is you, you must obtain a pre-assigned ANDA number in order to proceed. These are the instructions. I'm not going to read through them all. but uh, And they're also on our website. Um, in order to get your pre-assigned number, they're usually issued within three business days. And one thing that I really would like to point out is that these numbers do not expire. I know in the past there's been some um, information out there that they do, but they do not expire. So the next thing you need to do is you need to create a login for the portal. This is very similar to any type of login creation that you might do for Amazon or something like that. Um, once you're in the, in the website, you're clicking on the request for login, and you have the option to choose which event you're interested in, in um, using the portal for. So in this case, you would choose pre-ANDA meetings. You can also register for the other events as well. So if you're also involved in drug shortages, that's fine. You can register for that as well. You will register as either a US agent or the applicant. There is a bunch of questions they ask you, contact information, addresses, that type of thing. 
And then once approved, you'll receive your username and temporary password. Know that your login request will not be processed until you verify your email. This is just a screenshot of what you'll see when you go to the NextGen portal uh, website. And you can either create a login or log in if you already have a login. Just a few frequently asked questions about the login. One of the things that, it, that um, you're asked when you are um, creating the, uh, your login information, putting your login information, is what organization you're associated with. And there's a search functionality where you can search, and it will bring up organizations that you can then choose from if you see yours uh, that's pre-populated. If you don't see your organization, don't panic, please. You can enter it manually. That's fine. That's no problem at all. The other thing that it's going to ask you, it's going to ask you for a DUNS number. And if you don't have one or you don't know what it is, again, that's not a problem at all. And just use the nine-digit code. There has to be something in, in the spot or it won't let you proceed. And just put in nine nines. On the website is this EDM support email. So if you have any difficulties using the site, please feel free to reach out to them and they will help you with the, um, with the portal and getting a login and getting set up. So now that you've created a login, what should you do if you want to submit a meeting request? So you click on Create a New Request. And again, it was going to ask you some um, required information. And the first one is going to be the pre-assigned number and what type of meeting request you're submitting. So are you submitting for a product development meeting? Or are you submitting for a pre-submission meeting? And it's also going to ask you for the reference listed drug. When you're looking, when you're thinking about your RLD and finding it, uh, it's another type of um, situation as the uh, firms in that you can start typing for the um, for the RLD that you have in mind, and it will give you some choices. And you can choose from those. If you notice an error in the RLD information that comes up, that um, perhaps there's something, uh, a word missing from the, the dosage type or something like that, you have the ability to report a discrepancy through the portal to us, and we'll fix it. It does not prevent you from going on and, enter, and um, submitting your meeting request. There's a guidance out there called Referencing Approved Products and ANDA Submission that you might want to take a look at if you're thinking about, if you're not sure what your RLD is and, or you want to know more about how to choose. If you're unable to find your RLD at all, um, you need to email the pre-ANDA help at fda.hhs.gov email and let us figure out what's going on. Um, that has happened occasionally. And we will investigate quickly in order for you, because if you can't find your RLD, you will not be able to submit the meeting request. And so we'll uh, work with you to quickly get that resolved so that your RLD is available for you to choose so you can move on. For US agents, if you're submitting as a US agent, but you also need to fill in your applicant's information. And it's the same situation as before, where you search for the applicant information, or you can enter it manually. And you also need to provide the applicant contact information. If you um, are the applicant, and you, aren't, you have no US agent, you can proceed directly to attach a document. Do not enter yourself as a US agent if you're the applicant. It, it, um, causes problems in our uh, system if, that, if it gets entered twice uh, like that. So if you're, if you're not a US agent, you're directly the applicant, you're within the US, please just submit as the applicant. So the next thing you want to do is you want to add your documents. Um, you must, as I mentioned before, you must add a meeting package in order to proceed. It won't let you continue and, proceed and submit a meeting request unless you add a meeting package at this time. You can add more than one document. So you can add a cover letter. You can add supporting information. You can um, add you know, whatever else you might feel helpful for your meeting request. But you must include it. one of them must be a meeting package. There's multiple formats that I've listed out here um, at the bottom. And the, multi and the files may not exceed 45 megabytes. 
when you're submitting your meeting requests, before you submit your meeting requests, you have the option of saving your meeting request, your draft meeting request as you're working through it. You can come back to it later and continue where you left off. And one thing I want to point out is the FDA cannot see any saved meeting requests that you haven't submitted yet. So feel free to do that as many times as you want and we're not looking. Uh, you can also delete a meeting request if you haven't yet submitted it. So you've, decided, you've changed your mind for some reason, decided not to submit a meeting request at that point, you can delete it. Uh, this is before you click, click the submit meeting request button. Um, you'll be asked to review for accuracy and then you do the scary click submit to FDA when, once you think you're ready. And you'll receive a confirmation message um, it, through email once you've submitted your request. If you don't receive a, a confirmation email for some reason, please contact the pre and DA help email and let us know. We haven't had any issues with that, but if we do, I just want to make sure that we, we've uh, got your meeting request and that we're addressing it. One of the features of the portal is two-way communication. This came in, um, we started this in April, so we started the portal in back in October 1, but in April we enhanced it, and now we have two-way communication. What this means is that the applicant can submit and receive documents through the portal with an email notification, and the advantage of this is that all your documents and correspondence are in a single place. So what you've submitted and what you've received from the FDA are all within this the portal project that you have. And what I mean by with an email notification is you'll get a notification to your email that you have something in the portal to take a look at and it'll direct you to the portal. I think you can even click directly from the email into the portal to see the new document that's in there. This is just a screenshot of a fake, um, fake ANDA of the types of things that you might see when you're with your two-way communication as your communication list grows. And it'll describe the type of communication. Is this an FDA communication or is this something that's submitted to the FDA? And have we received it? Uh, also, it will um, identify whether or not you've reviewed the document yet, if it's something that we've submitted to you. If you need help during this process, there are several help guides and tutorials that are on the website. It will help you learn more. There's um, different frequently asked questions, and there's some other uh, things that you can use for reference. For portal support, as I mentioned earlier, you use the EDM support email. And for meeting specific help, contact pre ANDA help. So the next thing I want to talk about is the pre ANDA meeting process itself. This is a um, high level overview of the uh, the outline of how your meeting request goes through the system. I think of it as being in three phases if you've been granted a meeting request. So the first phase is this 30-day waiting period where you've submitted an, a request to us and you're waiting to hear back on the grant and I. Um, and then if you have been denied, if your meeting request is denied, at that point your project is closed. But I do want to stress that if you've received a denial, you will receive additional information on how to get your questions answered. So we'll help you understand maybe your question is better suited for a control correspondence. Maybe your application is incomplete and we need to see this, this, and this before we can really proceed to have a good meaningful meeting. And if you resubmit with this, this, and this, we'll, we'll um, reconsider the meeting request. During, the, during this phase is also when OPQ and OGD are both assessing the, uh, whether we're going to grant or deny the meeting. The assessments are done separately, but I would like to stress that we work together very closely with OPQ on this. And uh, we meet with them on each, um, on each of the applications. And uh, we come to a, um, a joint decision on whether we're going to grant or deny and, and this, this is the letter that's sent. So you get, you're going to receive a single letter from us that's going to grant with your grant or deny for your meeting. If your meeting is granted, um, then this is, you have this now 120-day waiting period. So 
after the 30-day uh, grant, so you've been granted, you received your letter, I've, I've been granted a meeting, I'm so excited, I've got my meeting. Within the next two or three weeks after that, you'll hear from the project manager, which would be identified in the letter that you get when you, your meeting is granted. You'll get a um, particular person that you'll be able to reach out to via email or phone for questions about your application, your um, grant application. And within two or three weeks after receiving this grant letter, because the grant letter is just that, all it says is that you've been granted a meeting. It doesn't have any of your meeting information in it. Well, during that two or three weeks, we're working on looking for good times, making sure everyone's available, assessing the type of the teams that need to be involved in your PNBA meeting request, and we'll get to you within two, three weeks on proposing dates and actually setting up, firming up the date of that meeting that will happen within the 120 days. I will say that most of the meetings happen towards the end of the 120 day time period. Uh, and also during this time then, each of the disciplines that are involved are doing their review and, and assessment of the, the, of the application, the, of the questions, they're working on the responses. They're holding internal meetings. There's a lot of collaboration going on between different offices. And um, all this is happening during this 120 days. FDA always has a big internal meeting before the external meeting to make sure we're all in alignment and that we are ready to go so that we're prepared as you are prepared. Then once you have the meeting, you you have a 30-day waiting period before you receive your meeting minutes. So within the next 30 days, you'll receive the meeting minutes from us. They are uh, considered final, those that come from us. But, but uh, we do request that or offer that after the meeting, if you would like to send us your meeting comments, we're very happy to receive those within seven days of the meeting. We actually like to get those to sort of see what your perspective on the meeting was. And, and we want to make sure that we don't, we use those to make sure that we were kind of in alignment, that everyone heard the same thing, that maybe if there's something that needs to be stressed further in the meetings that are in the meeting minutes. Once you receive your meeting minutes, the project is closed out and it's the end of that particular meeting. So what's the first thing that happens when the meeting comes in the door? So the first thing we do is, we, again, back to this pre-assignment number, we verify that it's a real number and that you haven't just put in one, two, three, four, five, six, or something like that, um, which we actually have had happen. <laughs> we verify that there's a meeting package, that there's questions. Um, this is very high level, just kind of that the basics are there. Then it goes into the evaluation stage where the assessment team, both one from OGD and OPQ, they're performing separate triage functions, as I mentioned, but they're also working together and deciding the extent of participation of the different offices. Uh, we, co we coordinate to provide a unified response. The assessment team reviews the product details, contents, and submitted questions in the meeting package. And then the assessment team determines whether the meeting is granted or denied. The assessment team is typically made of the same folks that are doing the, um, the review of your meeting package, but it may not be always the same people. It could be a different set of groups doing the assessment. So for the grant and I assessment, as mentioned earlier, within the, the first two years, which are already almost in year two, we have 30 days to do this, and then we're going to go to 14 days. Uh, we're going to start piloting this program next year so, um, so that we're ready on year three, the beginning of year three, to go with the 14 days. Um, and this, that's when we're going to re respond to your request for the grant or deny. Um, again, I, I want to stress that if your meeting is denied, we are not going to just say no. We're going to provide you some details, some reasons why and what you can do to get your questions answered. And if your meeting is granted, we offer the meeting date within 120 days of granting that calendar, of granting the request. So just this is just a um, kind of a high level slide about what the staff roles within OGDR. Uh, we have a division level signatory, which is a division 
director and ORS or deputy who makes a decision to grant or deny oversees the meeting process. This person is accountable for the accuracy and completeness of FDA's response at the um, for your uh, meeting. There's a meeting project manager. Each meeting has their own assigned meeting project manager that, as I mentioned, you will be given the, the date, uh, sorry, the name and the contact information for. This person facilitates any internal meeting preparation, consults, and information sharing, and there's quite a bit of uh, facilitation that does happen with these meetings. And this is your contact point of contact. And then there's the meeting team leader who's responsible for coordinating all of the discipline reviews into a consistent response. I'm just going to speak very highly of this because Sunil is going to uh, talk about the OPQ, OPQ perspective, but the OPQ has a triage team. They have multiple disciplines that look into, uh, depending on the question, and then they have an OPQ meeting chair that has some their own functions. So what happens next after um, you we've decided whether or not we're going to grant or deny the decision. So this is sent to you through the portal. And then when things are sent to you through the portal, you'll always receive an email that will tell, lead you back to the portal to say go to the portal. And you can read the communication there. Meeting denied letter completes your project. Again, you'll be advised of the next steps. For example, submit a control correspondence instead. If my meeting was granted, what happens? So we typically grant meetings as face-to-face -face meetings unless the sponsor has requested that they want a teleconference or a written response, which, which happens um, fairly frequently. So it's, it's your meeting, so you can dictate the format. But our offering, if we're going to grant a meeting, is going to be a face-to-face -face meeting. Um, it could be or, or it could be a written response. But you do have the, the, um, the choice within your meeting package to identify that you prefer a written response or you prefer a teleconference. Written responses and teleconferences still qualify you for a mid-review cycle meeting. So I just want to make that very clear that even if you're not getting a face-to-face -face meeting with us and you're getting a written response or a tea time, you're still in the program and you get that mid-cycle meeting uh, as, after your application has been turned in. We do utilize the information request uh, system, and we can ask for um, information if that we think that will help us with your with reviewing your application, your pre the application, and these are sent to the applicant through the portal, and then you we can send them to you any time. Although we try to send them to you early in the process, so they give you time to put the information together and give us time to review the information and you respond back to us through the portal. For the meeting package review, uh, discipline reviews are performed based on the meeting package question. So not all disciplines uh, are involved in all pre a &DA meetings. It really depends on the questions that are submitted in your meeting package. Responses are always based upon the agency's current thinking and knowledge and may change with available data or research in the future. OGD complies, uh, compiles the preliminary response with input from all the involved disciplines. For the preliminary response, you will receive this preliminary response if you have a face-to-face -face meeting or a teleconference scheduled with us. And it will be sent to the portal approximately five calendar days before your scheduled meeting. So this can present some challenges if it's your meeting is, say, on a Monday or Tuesday and you're getting this information on on Wednesday or Thursday, and you, you, ha you have to sort of use the weekend. Uh, this Sending this to you gives you the opportunity to focus your meeting on any clarification points that are related to your preliminary response. So we, you do have the option, the opportunity at this point to submit presentation materials, a revised agenda, and these are submitted through the portal. Please, please do not submit these materials until after you've received the preliminary response for us, because we really want you to use the preliminary response to guide your meeting to make it useful for you. You may be perfectly happy with questions one, two, and five from us, and there's no need for discussion. But questions, um, I'm not going to be able to do the math. It's too early. I don't know why I did that. Uh, <laughs> uh, for other questions, you'll need to. Uh, 
um, you do want to discuss those. We want to hear that. You know, the, that's what we want to hear when we're hearing back from you on your revised agenda. You do, you're not required to submit a presentation. We uh, often receive lengthy presentations from people. Please think long and hard about that because you're eating up your meeting time when you do that. Everyone in the room is very um, familiar with your application, with the RLD, with the, with the questions, with the discussion. We've had a lot of preparation on it. And so we don't need to, to be redundant on the information. And uh, it just leaves less time for discussion. So I really want to stress to you, you don't need to send in a presentation uh, unless it's a few specific slides related to your, um, to your clarification questions. You can cancel your meeting if you feel the preliminary response has adequately addressed your questions. And if you do that, you will still be eligible for the mid-review cycle meeting, even if you cancel your meeting after you've received your preliminary response. So we've had that happen several times. People are happy with the preliminary response. They feel we've addressed all their questions. There's no need for them to meet anymore. But they're still in the program, and they get that, that further help in the meeting at the mid-cycle. On the meeting day, the prospective applicant uh, has submitted their slides and agenda via the portal approximately 48 hours before. This is where I was talking about you may run into some time difficulties if you're over the weekend. Uh, and the meetings are typically one hour. And by typically, I mean always. Um, <laughs> and we stick to that. Uh, so that's, again, why your agenda needs to be focused on clarification on for, or further discussion around the preliminary written comments. The meeting participants all discuss the data, the questions and responses provided to assist the prospective ANDA applicants' complex product development program. Uh, I'm sure everyone has heard this before, but we could not review new material presented at the meeting for the first time. So please don't come to us with any new questions, new data, new um, information, and expect us to be able to give you a meaningful response that we haven't had time to review adequately. We can help you determine what the best way to submit that information is in order to get a feedback on it, but we won't be able to address it at the time of the meeting. After the meeting, as I mentioned, you can submit post-meeting comments, and we really would like to hear from you on those. And those would be within seven days of the meeting would be the preferred time frame. And we'll send our final meeting minutes through the portal within 30 days of the meeting. And this, again, completes your meeting request. And so the pre ANDA continuity is meant to mean how do we then tie all this in to when your application comes in the door. So for pre-submission for pre meetings, FDA identifies representatives of the ANDA assessment team that also will particip participate in your pre-submission meeting so that everyone um, is tied in with the people that are going to be reviewing your application, the people that have already been looking at your pre-application material. For pre-submission meetings and subsequent ANDA submissions, we communicate the results and of the product development meetings or other pre ada interactions to the review team. So there is a lot of communication between the um, review team of your ANDA and the folks that have done your pre-review, uh, pre-meeting reviews. Meetings are automatically pulled under your ANDA program once the ANDA is submitted, which is, again, why we need the pre-assignment, uh, pre-assigned ANDA number, so that when a reviewer is looking at your uh, your newly submitted application. They see that you've had a meeting with us, and all the documents, all the um, information is easily clickable, and they can find that information is right there for them. And if you have a pre-assigned number, and you're submitting control correspondence, it's not required at this time to have a pre-assigned number for a control correspondence. But if you do have one, it will be helpful to please include it in your request um, in your control correspondence because it just further helps us link everything together. Uh, a few words about the pre and day meeting package. Uh, I'm getting the, they're going to take me off on a, <laughs> um, so we have a draft guidance. Please, please refer to the draft guidance and read it thoroughly. Um, there's a formal, the formal meetings between FDA and ANDA applicants. Number your questions. I've said this many times before, number your questions clearly and group them by discipline, and minimize the use of sub-questions. So please not uh, give us A, B, C, Roman numeral 1, 2, 3. Uh, you're not fooling us. We know that there's really 30 questions in the package when you do that. <laughs> 
So just try to keep it simple for so that we can provide the simple response and, and it flows well. Uh, for product development meetings, we want clear and specific questions about your development program, including data uh, that supports your proposed new, appro new approach. And this may include characterization of the RLD and ANDA products, results from any pilot studies, comparisons of the proposed ap uh, approach to the currently recommended, those rec currently recommended by the FDA. So whatever we have in the product so guidance, you want to do something different, tell us all about what it is that you want to do that's different. Uh, quanti any quantitative analysis that you may have performed that supports your approach. For pre-submission meetings, highlight any unique, novel, or complex aspects of your upcoming meeting submission so that you will present at the meeting. If you have specific questions related to, um, related to your application, provide appropriate background material and data related to those questions. Uh, the meeting package is reviewed. Um, a product manager is assigned as a point of contact from ORS, and FDA staff review your meeting, your package, and requests and consults, and send information requests again as needed. Same situation as the um, product development meetings, and the uh, prospective ANDA applicant responds via the portal. We and again, we send the preliminary responses five days before. Well, a few words about program metrics and trends. Uh, Ten months, so I could made the cutoff um, July 31st, 10 months into the program. We received 65 Green Day meeting requests that have been submitted. I think now it's up to like 75. Um, of those, 40 have been granted and 25 have been denied. I'm really getting this signal now. I need to hurry up. <laughs> uh, denied meetings are given a path forward. And so don't be alarmed by that 25 denied meetings. Uh, you will be able to get information from us. Uh, the most common types of products that we receive are topicals, ophthalmics, inhalation, and injectables, particularly long-acting injectables as, that um, come under the complex product definition. This is just a very uh, uh, a graph showing the granted versus denied. It's difficult to sort of pull out any trends from this because it really depends on the, the um, quality of your meeting package as to whether your meeting has been is going to get granted or denied. A few common reasons for denial include incomplete meeting packages, that it's not a complex product, that you've chosen the wrong type of meeting, so please be careful in, when you're thinking about that, that it should be a control correspondence instead, or that there is a PSG available and you're not asking for an alternative by equivalence route, in which case you would submit a control. A few, a little bit about tips and advice. I'm talking as fast as I can, Jeff. Um, provide some sufficient uh, data to review question in the meeting package. If you have questions about Q1, Q2, and where it's not required by regulation or it's not recommended in the PSG, the meeting is the correct pathway for you to submit these, um, these type of questions. But when you do this, you need to submit your entire BE approach for your specific formulation. And we'll provide feedback on that BE approach. Uh, if, you don't, if you know that you're not Q1, Q2, please include your justification. In submitting devices, we have a uh, relatively new device, uh, relatively new guidance called, uh, um, well, I'm not going to read it, and, but we call it the Comparative Analysis Guidance for short. And consider when and how to submit your device. You may submit your device at, in multiple times throughout your, the life of your development program. So do you want to do that as part of a meeting request or as a control? We will accept a device evaluation as part of the control. It's a 60-day control or it can be tied into your meeting request as part of a, a broader group of questions. Uh, think about whether you're submitting the prototype or a final design. And, and a word about 3D printed devices, which we've received several, which is acceptable to, to submit a 3D devices, particularly early on in your development program. But please make sure they work. We've had several that fall apart immediately as soon as we try to use them. Think carefully about whether your product development or pre-submission pre -submission meeting. Product development meetings are for discussion on specific scientific issues. Pre-submission meetings are for 6 to 12 months before your submission. And then also, you also might want to think about MI control correspondence or product development meeting, which is a very important decision because the time frames involved in these. Standard control reviews are 60 days. Complex controls are reviewed in 120 days. 
I really want to point out here that the complex control is not the same as a complex product. So just because it's a complex product, it does not mean that it's a complex control. That means for a complex control, it means it, ha it needs to have a clinical input. Uh, you also want to consider, you have some considerations to make if you want to submit an optional meeting or control. Meetings are best for multidisciplinary questions, and controls are for single questions or small groups of closely related questions. And you want to, again, consider your timelines about how soon am I going to get my answer and what's going to help me in my development program. A few examples. I'm almost done, Jeff, I swear. Examples of useful questions. <laughs> Do not submit a protocol and ask us to review it. Instead, submit some specific questions regarding your protocol. So just don't send us the whole, whole protocol and say, is my protocol OK? Um, don't say, what test should I do? Instead, propose the, your development plan with appropriate justification. Uh, don't say, is my PK study acceptable? Instead, identify the point of uncertainty in your, in your proposal and ask your specific question. Is my specification acceptable? Instead, ask a specific question about this complex product and your, under, and your understanding of how you will control the quality, critical quality aspects of your attributes of your product. Last slide, takeaways. Use the portal to submit your meeting request. Please read the guidance before you submit a meeting request. Please carefully choose the correct pathway, or you may get turned away and asked to submit again under a different uh, meeting type or control correspondence, and provide us sufficient information. And I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. And I apologize for all my. Uh, I was getting a lot of. <laughs> yeah, all my. A lot of stuff in the background. background.